Hello, Arthur here with a Tezos Dev Update for January 26, 2018. So like I said last week, uh, I'm not going to go through the list of all the commits that we have, uh, especially in these days where most of them are small bug fixes. They are um, uh, refactorings, uh, little improvements. So they're not exactly uh, worth writing home about, even though they're important. So if you want to uh, follow the details of the code development, I send you to the GitLab. Uh, so I want to talk about a couple of things. Uh, one of the main one is economic uh, constants. So if you remember the Tezos white paper, a lot of it is red line saying like, hey, a lot of these constants uh, are going to be subject to change depending on how many uh, tokens are in the system and also like how we analyze the proof of stake algorithm and how we uh, reason about those uh, those costs. So the two main uh, economic constants parameters that needs to be set are on the one hand, proof of stake. You know, how many endorsers per blog, how many uh, cycles, uh, how many uh, blocks per cycle, how long does it take uh, until uh, the block deposits are, are paid back or the block rewards are paid back, what is the amount of block reward, what is the amount of an endorsement reward, and so on and so forth. So that's one cluster. The other cluster is anything having to do with smart contract costs, so like gas cost, uh, so minimum fees, for example, uh, for gas cost to avoid spam, even if there's like no demand for uh, transactions or uh, storage costs, which is also an important one. Basically putting costs everywhere so that you're sure that there's no uh, spam attack that's gonna blow the size of your context or blow the validation time for a block. So on the first cluster, uh, it's something I've been working about for a while, even though I've had a lot of, a lot to, to deal with over the past few months. Uh, but uh, I pushed today on the master branch some constant for the proof of stake, and these are still subject to, I, I, I'll preface, I, these are still subject to change. We're still looking at them and running some simulations. However, uh, we thought about them uh, quite a bit, and so you can you can start making calculation based on that, and that's something that should be of uh, interest to people building delegation service. Uh, you might be uh, interested in knowing that the deposits made by uh, delegates will also be eligible for uh, roles. So roles will be created out of those safety deposits, which means you can uh, receive uh, block rights from those deposits. And from an economic standpoint, it doesn't change anything, but it makes calculation and, uh, and accounting much easier if you're running a delegation service. That was a common request. And so uh, putting that in, in the protocol. Uh, a few changes compared to what's running in the alphanet. The cycles are longer. Cycles are typically three days with a 15-day uh, fork point, uh, which means that after, you know, if, if you've been online for more than 15 days, you will need a checkpoint in order to uh, rejoin the network. That's a property of every uh, proof of stake system. Um, and you'll, you know, so you'll find the values for the block rewards and for the endorsement rewards. And they may seem small when you look at the block reward compared to the, uh, to the block pawn. But if you look at the ratio, and if you compare the ratios uh, with, say, like Bitcoin mining and the cost of ASICs, it's, it's actually pretty, uh, uh, pretty sensible. It's just that there's a lot of blocks and there's a lot of endorsements. There's 32 endorsements per block, that's 32 endorsements per minute. That is a lot of, uh, that is a lot of signature getting each of them a uh, very small uh, reward. So we try to explain all the bits of the proof of the algorithm that maybe weren't clear, and we're going to keep doing passes at this document to try to clarify as much as possible. But we wanted to have it in um, in one place so that the implementation wasn't the reference. Uh, it's not uh, as precise uh, as I'd like it to be. It would be nice to have a very nice uh, mathematical description of the entire algorithm, but this is what we have, and it's been running pretty well in the alphanets. And we've been thinking about that actually against it for uh, a few years now. So I think we have some uh, we have some sense of how it can behave. Uh, overall, I would say that a lot of the complexities that we have in this proof of stake algorithm comes from the property of saying, hey, anyone who has a token can, in principle, be selected for creating a block. And enforcing that property is, uh, is pretty hard and requires some gymnastic. Uh, there's a lot of other proof of stake uh, algorithms that we're super excited with uh, for V2 that we've been looking at, although we're mostly focused on uh, trying to get uh, this V1 out. So in terms of these constants, those are pretty set. Uh, I know that Milo is working on um, gas costs. So gas is not in, uh, in Tezos, it's tricky because it's not just execution of Mikkelsen, it's also the typing of the program, it's also deserializing of the data. So you have to be very careful that you're not leaving any stone and turn. Uh, and I think that uh, we should have pretty soon those uh, economic constants as well. So once we get all these uh, economic constants wrapped up, that pretty much wraps up for the uh, protocol itself. And most of the work will be on uh, on the um, 
network layer uh, and the uh, and the shell, which means that this is something that can be updated uh, without a hard fork because the rules of consensus doesn't, don't change. You're just being more careful with your transaction pool. You're just being more conservative into how many blocks you accept, where do you store the blocks, and so on and so forth. Uh, some folks have noticed on I've seen on Riot that. The alphanet spikes every time you have a site. Sorry, the alphanet process spikes in memory usage every time you have a process. Uh, we have some great um, friends at um, at Irmin who are uh, interested in helping us uh, make it uh, make it work better. But that's something that can uh, that can deploy over time. If you have a good enough machine right now, you won't really uh, you won't really feel those uh, those spikes. Uh, they're pretty much worse on Windows, and most of this has to do with the DVLDB backend, which doesn't play well with uh, LWT. Uh, other than that, uh, you'll see on Twitter, uh, Grigoire made this beautiful map of all the dependencies in the system, and it's not just a map. There was also refactoring that went with it to uh, explain a little bit uh, how things are connected. It'll be more interesting to you if you're uh, jumping in a code base and trying to understand how uh, things relate to each other. But essentially, it shows you the entire uh, it shows you the entire system and where the protocol uh, hooks uh, into all of this. So pretty graph. Check it out on Twitter. Uh, in the meantime, uh, yeah, please uh, join the alphabet. I think we've uh, reached a high water mark in terms of number of blocks. It's more stable than ever. Uh, create some contracts. There was a uh, a cool demo at uh, Gifla, which is a um, uh, conference uh, in France at the moment uh, with the OKML Pro team uh, demonstrating how to compile. Uh, a contract with liquidity and deploy on the uh, and deploy on the alphabet. There's some pictures online, and I'm sure there'll be a video. In the meantime, see you next week. Cheers.